a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal. So personally, Banana Split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. The very best in quality is Captain T's upholstery. Is that couch cushion sinking lower every time you sit in it? Does your boat look better with the cover on? Has your car's interior seen its better days? Stop using a towel to cover up those rips in the golf cart. Isn't it about time you had it restored to better than new with a custom upholstery from Captain T? Captain T's upholstery has been right here in Ocala for nearly 20 years, so they know how to make your ride one of a kind. Whether you want to take that classic ride back to a factory look or put your favorite sports team front and center. Captain T's upholstery is who to call. 352-369-1810. That's 352-369-1810. Or stop by their location, 5030 South Pine Avenue in Ocala, just past the drive-in. And of course, don't forget to visit them on the web, CaptainTUpholstery.com. The very best in quality is Captain T's upholstery. The College of Central Florida is committed to being your first choice for quality higher education. CF has locations in Marion, Citrus, and Levy counties and offers more than 60 academic programs. Earn a certificate, associate, or bachelor's degree with Florida's 2 plus 2 program. A student can complete an associate in arts at CF and be guaranteed admission to a state of Florida university. CF is ranked number 13 in the U.S. for affordability, is military friendly, and offers a full student life experience. Make CF your first choice. Call 352-873-5800. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, four minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Have you ever known somebody who um, you know from school or from the workplace and um, they don't really strike you as a leader, right? Mm-hmm. And then maybe there's an opportunity to invite, they invite you to, your home, to their home. And when you're in their environment, they're in control. You know, they know how to tell that dog, you got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking you out right yeah. now. I know you need to. But I am in control here. This is not the workplace. I'm guilty. <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> um, uh, Greg Casira has an interesting um, philosophy that leadership is learned. It's, it, there are no born leaders. And, and uh, while I think we probably all can think of somebody who we think of as a born leader, I think he's right. I think leadership is something that's learned. And my little <laughs> silly example, my little silly example... Um, hold on, hold on one sec. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, anyway, anyway, leader, leaders, <laughs> something happened here in the studio, I apologize. Um, Greg Kazira is the president of Learned Leadership. He's an assistant coach to the high school boys soccer team at Charleston Catholic High School in Charleston, West Virginia. Teaches young people the values of leadership. It's a, It's an important skill to learn. Oh, uh, gosh, you guys had me scared over there. Sorry. Good morning, Greg. I apologize. We had a... We're okay. I don't know what happened, but I'm in here, and everything else wasn't in here. Good morning, Good morning Greg. Good morning, guys. Hey, so, I'm going to tell you something. You're in the right place at the right time, because where I live here in beautiful Charleston, West Virginia, or Pinch, West Virginia, we got freezing rain this morning. Do you so, really? Uh, Oh, it's nasty. Well, uh, the weatherman is the leader. That's what I think. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's, that's, that's a fact. (laughs) Yeah, and so I was being silly in my example, but let me me serious, make make my example serious. (laughs) I've known people who can be leaders among some people and not among others. Have you ever noticed some people who can do that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. People tend to sometimes morph into their surroundings or into their group. And, and I've even seen that because, you know, when, uh, you know, I'd fall into that. When I went back to Pittsburgh back, uh, back when, it was real easy when I was a young guy to fall back into that group where I was the follower, not the leader anymore. So I had to, you kind of recognize that and say, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I, I think sometimes, and I wonder if you can relate to this, that, that whole alpha male thing kicks in 
unless I'm with, like if I'm at somebody else's house and I say, okay, well, I'm not the alpha male here. Let me, let me step, take a step back and let somebody else be the alpha male. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, you do that. And, and uh, we, we just, my wife and I were in uh, Tokyo last week on business and we, we were following most of the time over there. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> we had to, we had to, because I couldn't read anything. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, so tell, tell me about, because the here's where I wanted to I take this to your book. Because the person who can be a leader in certain circumstances already knows how to be one, just doesn't know how to apply it maybe at their job or maybe at wherever else they, they have to be. Um, what do, What is your thought on that? I, I think a, a lot of times it's, it's, it's self-confidence. I think that, and that's what I see, because even a lot of the young people that we have, they're, they may already be leaders in their in their little group. But when I get them, particularly uh, as a coach, my main mission is to bring out that leader in them, because they've already got the skills. I just have to convince them that they have the skills. And that's really a lot of times that's that's in, in any group. Uh, I get to work with, a, uh, I, I see this, uh, a lot of people are kind of shy and, and step back. And once I explain to them that, you know, your style doesn't have to be, you don't have to look like General Patton. I mean, leaders come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. And, and sometimes, you know, you don't have to be that, that loud, boisterous person sometimes that that quiet um facilitating person is actually a leader and uh Mm -hmm. i see this from a lot of women's groups where uh, i'll I'll work with women there was one group that we do an exercise where we built towers out of spaghetti and marshmallows been doing it for 15 years what do you build these groups have it's a team building thing but they have 10 minutes to work together and build a tower out of spaghetti and marshmallows. I'm going to try this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> is the spaghetti cooked or uncooked? I mean, this is important. <laughs> it's uncooked. I hand them, I hand them a bag of marshmallows and a, and a pound of uh, spaghetti in a box and turn them loose. And, you know, what's, what's fascinating, you do the same thing the same way and, it, and you compare groups. And... You know, like among the high school students, I do when I work with them, they usually can build theirs about two feet tall. And engineers, if you get a group of engineers, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's horrific. <laughs> it, it, oh, it is. <laughs> I first, oh, the first time I did it to a group of engineers, <laughs> I was at my um, El Monter at West Virginia University. Petroleum engineers, smart folks. Yeah. Um, and not just all guys, girls too. <laughs> The tallest tower was 16 inches, and it fell over as soon as I measured it. Three of the other towers didn't even stand up. And I was, as an engineer, I was speechless. I mean, I, I literally was like, I can't believe it. I thought these, these folks just knock it out of the park. And, uh, and, and I realized that you put four engineers together, and I think they all think they all know what to do, or they just don't know how to work together, or there's no creativity. It's a lot of different things, but... Four of the same people don't do very well. But put one engineer in a group of three or four folks, it becomes magic. So oh, it, man. it's, it's, a, you gotta, it's, but it is. You got to release this as a video. This sounds like a viral video but, to me. But, here's the cool thing. Though. With the title, the Spaghetti tower, and Marshmallows. It really, oh, that's a good idea. I like that. But, you know, the tallest tower ever built was built by a group of six women. They built it. 52 inches tall. Can you imagine wow. the tower is, is over four feet tall? And they're, it's, it's not just built. They're carrying it around the ballroom of this hotel. <laughs> and I am amazed. And no one has ever – that was probably – I'm trying to think when that was. It was like five years ago. But no one – there was a group this just last year that actually built one to 51 inches. It was a, a corporate group I did. And that's, that's as close as anyone's ever got. And I said to these women, these ladies, I said, who is the leader? And they looked at me like I was like from another planet. And they said, well, there wasn't one. We just collaborated. And I'm thinking, mm. you know, there's, there, there's a message here, folks. Yeah. To, to corporate America. Like, y- you better be looking around. And the, that person you think is the leader may not really be the leader. If you, if you get a group of six people like this, put them on any project, they'll knock it out of the park for you. Wow, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. And, and do you attribute that to the fact that women maybe are brought up differently than men, and, and maybe their leadership skills 
work better uh, as a group than than because us guys think, well, I'm the leader. No, I am. We're that whole king of the mountain thing, right? I really think that there's there's something to that, Larry, because I think what happens is they 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 listen to each other. They they take in all everybody, and everybody felt I could see that group. I watched them work. Everybody felt free to offer their opinion, but they, they there was probably what I didn't since there were so many groups that day. I didn't get to watch them specifically, but my guess is out of those six, there's probably one that. She won't admit to it, but she really was the leader. She probably facilitated the other five. But still, there was a freedom. And I noticed that I've worked with uh, women in leadership positions. And compared to a lot of male leaders, there you, you felt free to speak. You felt you know, I always felt free to say, here's what I think. And they're still gonna. They're still the leader. They're still the person in charge. But but they're able to get all those. They're they're able to draw people That's out. That's interesting. Well, maybe it's because they don't think about sex every seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. You got a cloud uh, hanging over. I your mean, now, if I'm st- if I'm sticking a piece of spaghetti into a marshmallow, and then seven <laughs> seconds later I'm thinking, oh la la, you know. I'm- <laughs> I never thought about it that way before. <laughs> uh, so, oh, I, I love this. So, so this is a, a great tool. The book is a great tool to help somebody not only to become maybe more of a leader themselves, but to see how to apply leadership. And that's what it sounds like it, with the example with the spaghetti and the marshmallows. Right? It really is. And in and, and the book, what it does, it gives people, I, I call them the 10 keys of leadership, but there's 10 things that, I've noticed that no matter who they are, and even if it's people like John Maxwell, uh, national leadership expert, he doesn't call them 10 keys, but when I look at the things that he says leaders do, it's all in there. So I'm using 10 keys. But we've been doing leadership at Charleston Catholic since way back in 1999. So that's how long it's been. And here's here's, here's the proof of pudding, because you get a different group of kids every year. And when those young men become men they become leaders as the season goes along what we've seen is when we started this whole leadership thing we went from being a team that never won anything had 500 seasons to a perennial state champion we've been since the book the book was actually published in 2007 since it came out we started actually using it they get a copy of it and it's their guide uh, through the season for the last 10 years can you imagine this book came out uh, for the 2008 season we've been to the state tournament 10 years in a row oh my god I, mean, that, that, I mean this is the this is the mindset these young people have is this is what we do well coach yeah we go to the state tournament and we win the state championship out of those out of those 10 seasons we've been to the the state finals seven of them and won five state championships wow. and that's not because i'm uh, we don't have we we got the same players everybody else got we don't get to recruit anybody but the difference i see it is these these seniors and then we've actually started working with the underclassmen now and they when they become leaders it, in particular in, in the sport of soccer as a coach we can't call time out and bring them over or you know you, you get them at halftime right, you get the beginning right, of the game you right. get them at halftime and that's it and they've got to take control on the field there's no one else that can do it and it's it's amazing to watch how they grow and how you know what are things I, i'll share with you because it's it's really cool because one of the things i teach is, is how do you influence people and most people uh, larry uh, rob when's the last time someone praised you for something do you remember um like half hour ago yeah <laughs> Good, that's rare that was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, it I, is I, it is rare, but I'm not lying. We had a nice no, list. Yeah, we did. Had a nice. I said, that, see, that's that's awesome because <laughs> I did that to high school students. I said, when's the last time anybody was praised? And here, about a third of the class stuck up their hands. At, you know, and I said, well, when's the last time anybody was criticized? And you know, it was like immediately. Everybody, the whole class had their hands in the air. Oh yeah, that was this morning. In corporate yeah. America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll know real quick when you do something wrong. But in corporate America, usually. You get, you can tell you how you screwed up by when someone criticized you, but rarely do you get praised. Good point. I, I teach these young people how to praise, how to compliment, and and I, I did this at a, one group, and I said, I said, I, you know, you go home, and I said, go praise two people in your family, and I, I came back the next day, and this young man says, I said, how'd it go? And this one kid says, 
I praised my mother, and I guess it must have been the first time he ever did it. She said she was so shocked she dropped the tray that had the turkey <laughs> on it. Just... Oh, I thought maybe she had marshmallows and spaghetti on the tray. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, great fun, but, but I, fun, no, fun good. interview, I, I, and, and and really good and information. I think how to do it for? Can you imagine how did how did how did you praise a date? They did not. I said you go to the homecoming dance. Here's what you better do. You better let your date know she's worked on her hair, she's worked on her dress. Oh, yes. You better say something you, about those absolutely, two. Absolutely, yeah. Now, that's a good leader right there, giving that advice. <laughs> that was good stuff. Uh, uh, fun interview, Greg. Thank you for being on the air with us today. I found the book on Amazon. Do you have a website? It's on Amazon. It's on gregkazare.com. There's a matter of fact, on that website, gregkazare.com, there's some really great stuff on leadership. And uh, I, I, we do some leadership things. There's an online leadership course that people can take. And it, it's, it's good stuff. But, but anybody can lead. It's just a matter of do you want to. I think you are right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for being on the show with us hey, today. I'll, always enjoyed being with you. I can't, wait to, I can't wait to try the spaghetti tower thing. All right. We will take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Howdy folks, R.L. here for Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional, cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequaled. Personally, banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. The College of Central Florida is committed to being your first choice for quality higher education. CF has locations in Marion, Citrus, and Levy counties and offers more than 60 academic programs. Earn a certificate, associate, or bachelor's degree with Florida's 2 plus 2 program. A student can complete an associate in arts.